Hey guys, it's Lenny and welcome back to the shop. Well, this week's project video is a couple days late and I do apologize about that, but I did have some family matters that needed my attention at the beginning of the week. And as you know, family comes first. But all in all, everything is good with the family now and I was able to get out in the shop and get your project done. This week's project is a router bit cabinet. It's small, compact, it holds a lot of router bits, and hey, it can be mounted on a wall, it can be put on a workbench next to your router station, all your bits are organized, and you have easy access to them. Now, you have to admit, for a weekly project, a router bit cabinet's not too bad. You know, a shop project every once in a while. But, maybe we can do a little bit better. What if this router bit cabinet had a secret? Better yet, what if it had a secret compartment? Now we're talking. Well, this one does, and as I said, it looks like a router bit cabinet. It functions like a router bit cabinet. However, when it's unlocked, it reveals a secret compartment inside. Now this compartment is big enough to hold documents, jewelry, money, a handgun, anything that you want to keep a secret or hide away. Now, as you know, since the beginning of time, men and women love to hide things from one another. And a lot of times those things are hidden in plain sight. It could be a vault behind a picture on a wall. It could be a hidden drawer in a jewelry box or a secret compartment in a piece of furniture. Well, that's what this cabinet is. It's a piece of furniture that hangs there in plain sight. And if you didn't know the secret behind it, you'd never know that there was anything hidden inside of it. So stick around and I'll show you how to build it. Okay guys, right now I've got my box joint or finger joint jig set up on the table saw along with a 3 inch dado stack and that's the type of joinery I'm going to use in this case. And I've got the jig it's set up to cut 3 inch fingers um, to match the size of my dado stack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two boards uh, at the same time. Now the back board I'm going to go ahead and put up against the key that's at the bottom of my jig here. In the front board, I'm going to offset by 3 eighths of an inch. Once I have the offset correct, then I'm just going to go ahead and take a clamp and clamp the two boards to the jig until I get started. So now, with that, I can go ahead and work my way around all sides. Alright guys, I'm ready to uh, glue these uh, four sides up and I went ahead and put some blue tape on the inside of the board right up against that joint to help with glue squeeze out in the cleanup uh, uh, once the glue up is complete. Alright guys, well what I'm going to do now is out of this 1x6, I'm going to go ahead and cut two 14-inch uh, boards and I'm going to laminate them together and then from that lamination I will be able to cut my individual um, bit holders or dividers and we'll show you more of that once I get everything cut and glued up. The door frames, which are going to have the glass panel in it, they are going to be an inch and a half wide. And we're going to set them aside for right now. The other set of frame pieces are an inch wide, um, and I need to cut them down to their individual length. Now the inside frame pieces are for the hidden compartment. They're just going to box in the, uh, the hidden compartment's wall.
So now that I have my inner frame pieces uh, screwed together, I can go ahead and attach the false panel to it. Okay, the dividers that you saw me cut earlier on the table saw, I went ahead and attached to the false panel, or the, in this case, the uh, boxes fake back. Now, I could have put three rows on here, but I don't have that many router bits, so I just went ahead and added two rows. If I wanted to add three, I would have dropped this one down a little bit more and added another row of bits up here, and it will accommodate three rows of bits just fine. Okay, I've got the false panel installed, and I went ahead and installed the hinges. On this back side of the top piece of the frame, I'm just going to take a small hand plane, and I'm just going to remove this corner a bit. And a sharp plane makes quick work of it. Alright, I've got the groove cut in uh, all four pieces, both rails and styles uh, for the door frames. Now, the glass is 3 seconds of an inch thick, um, and so I basically just cut a groove just big enough for the glass to have a little bit of play. Now what I want to do is on the two rails, I want to go ahead and cut a 3 seconds inch tenon on each end of them that will fit in to that groove and that's going to be how I'm going to join this door together. So now with the uh, tenons cut in the end of the rail pieces we can go ahead and I've got a nice fit, the exact fit I want, uh, and we can go ahead and glue and join this door together and install the glass panel. Okay guys, with the false panel in its most upright position where it's going to be locked into place, I've got two marks here uh, where I'm going to drill some shallow holes that will accept the size of the head of this small nail. And then I'm going to drill a small center hole that will be the exact size of the shaft of the nail. And that's going to be what locks these into place. Now to unlock them, I'll show you what I'm going to be making for the key in just a moment. Okay guys, the router bit case is done. I went ahead and installed the door and I just put a knob, a wood, just a regular wooden knob that I had laying around the shop since this is going to be a shop cabinet. Um, I put a couple of rare earth magnets in the door and one in the base uh, just to act as a magnetic latch. <clears throat> and I've got uh, just some of my router bits in there. I need to get some more nylon sleeves and I'll put the rest of the router bits I have in. These are just beat around bits. Uh, my higher end bits I keep in a different case, but I put some bits in here just for appearance sake. Uh, because the main thing about this case is the hidden compartment. Now, I like to hide things in plain sight. So, down here at the bottom of the box, I just have a, a board. And when it's it's made of the same material as the case, so when it's in its place, it just looks like you know part of the case uh, in a sense. But when taken out and slid across the top, where I have those two nails, it pulls the nails out, which allows me to open up the cabinet and have access to the secret compartment. Um, the simplest form of a key that I made is just, uh, I just threw two rare earth magnets in there the same distance apart as the two nails that I have in the top. And as I said, you know, they're just meant to catch and release. That way I have quick access. And the key will always um, just stay right there and look like part of the case. I mean, who'd have thunk? <laughs> <laughs>
So that's it. Uh, I went ahead and put the back on. So now I'm ready to add a couple of little hangers, uh, maybe a French cleat or something to hang this on the wall and it's ready to go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's project and hey, you know, overall, it's a cool little bit case. Um, glass pane door, you can see the bits that you have and the only added little benefit is it's got a secret compartment. Um, now, of course, my bit case is not really a secret anymore because I've told you my secret. So be sure, like I said, when you build yours, keep that to yourself. Until next time, guys. See you soon.